All righty, fantastic. Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining uh, today's webinar. This is uh, the Easy Lease and Coalition for College Cost Savings. Uh, we wanted to detail the partnership to all of our uh, association members of the coalition and therefore the uh, schools and colleges and universities under these associations as well. So today we wanna outline uh, both the uh, overall uh, offering here that we have as a partnership between Easy Lease and the coalition, uh, dig in a little bit into uh, you know, lease accounting, ASC 42, why it matters and easy lease and how we can help you all accomplish this with uh, sustained compliance. Um, I'm gonna allow uh, Lion Cruz to kick it off a little bit and just share an introduction as a familiar face to you all. Um, at that point, then uh, we'll, we'll take over the reins from Lion and we'll uh, hopefully walk through this as quick and painless as possible for everybody. So Lion, uh, turn it over to you. Wonderful, thank you, Stephen. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the president of the Coalition for College Cost Savings, which we just call the Coalition. Uh, and I'd like to thank you all for joining today. Uh, if you have been an accountant or are an accountant or are a CPA, you know that over the past few years, we've, we've all been very happy every time that uh, this, this can got kicked down the road. Uh, I, I would always, and, and then we started to expect this can to get kicked down the road, but uh, unfortunately the, the lease accounting change has, has, has come and that it, uh, it's about to bite us. So uh, we're, we're, we're actually going to have to implement it uh, in, the, in the coming year. What I wanted to do when, when I realized that implementation was, was upon us, uh, I wanted to find a solution for our schools that would help the CFOs and controllers out there to easily make this implementation. Uh, it's going to be messy, it's going to be hard, it's going to be frustrating at times. Uh, I know a lot of the CFOs and controllers were, were looking to do this on Excel, and I just think that's going to be a nightmare once you get into it. So I started looking around for, uh, uh, for software that would help the implementation, of 842 and uh, found Easy Lease. I think they are truly the easiest piece of software that's out there to help you implement, uh, implement this new accounting change. So I won't take any more of your time, but uh, just once again, I wanted to thank you for, for joining and say a little bit from the coalition. And with that, I will turn it back over to Stephen. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lion. Appreciate that. Well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and dig right in here. I'm going to, um, at this point, turn the microphone over to our solution consultant and our manager of our professional services team over here at Easy Lease, Andrew Basil. Um, so Andrew, I'm going to um, monitor the chat uh, while you present. And if there are questions uh, that come up that we can address uh, immediately, I'll make you aware of them. But uh, at this point, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Can y'all hear me? All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as Steven said, I'm a, I'm a solution consultant along with Dan, who's also on the line. Just in case there's any interruptions to my internet, Dan might jump in or, or, or just jump in from his own experiences here. And then Brian Seck and Stephen Klein on the Easy Lease side are in our alliances team. So they manage the relationship with the coalition and Jenny helps us out. She's fantastic with all the marketing uh, that we need because we work with other organizations too, right? PwC is an accounting firm example and other audit firms as well as smaller audit firms, accounting firms, consulting firms, and we're going to talk about some of that today. So I've been, um, you know, I've been doing this a long, long time. I saw the first lease accounting projects in 2015. Um, I really um, am excited to be here. I, I love this work because I want to, as as Lion was saying, make this as easy for you as possible and allow you to focus on student success and other things and doing value added accounting work rather, you know, to, to make this as quick, simple, and easy as possible. So I'm, I'm all about allowing you to um, spend more time on not only doing your, your kind of value-added work, but also time with your family and so forth. And I, I'm a you know, self-described nerd. My father's a professor. My mother's a librarian. My wife's a teacher, right? Uh, the, my alma mater in Hoboken, New Jersey, Stevens Institute of Technology, is a member of the coalition. So this is particularly exciting for me. So that's the thing about this that, that I want you to remember is that this really can be simple, uh, affordable, and fast to deploy. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ASC 842. What, what is it? Um, what's new about lease accounting? I'm only going to spend a few minutes there, but I want to kind of level set because we're recording this. 
uh, and we have more content on it if you want. Then we'll talk about uh, what we need for the audit, um, what is new and so forth. Also pretty briefly, then we'll get into how this is done, uh, why Easy Lease is, is kind of, why the coalition chose Easy Lease a little bit. And then I wanna show you a quick demo. So this is not meant to be an all inclusive meeting today. Uh, we just wanna make kind of a preliminary kickoff and then we'd love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and talk about your current lease portfolio, what you think uh, is, is going to happen in the future and so forth. And then we'll address towards the end on, on how this is deployed. Now, I, I love questions. So please, uh, this is meant to be interactive. You can Slack question, I'm sorry, not Slack, use Zoom and send us questions um, uh, you know, throughout this. At the end, if we have time, I, you know, I wanna keep this brief, but if, if anyone wants to speak up, um, just let us know, but you gotta send a chat through because uh, we're kind of running this as a bit of a webinar. So what is, um, what is this 842 thing? I wanna kind of level set. I'm sure most of you have already looked this up, but just to very quickly summarize the when and the what, right? So this is imminent now. Uh, the, the deadline did not get moved as, as kind of Lyon mentioned already. They, they, the FASB met in November of 21. Um, the vote was to not defer again, not defer for a third time or fourth time. I don't know how many times it's been deferred. And the big new thing is operating leases, right? So you've been capitalizing some of your assets already that are leases, but uh, you know, from a larger standpoint, $4 trillion in the United States alone are going onto balance sheets across corporations and so forth, at least $4 trillion. So it's, it's a big change. It's, it's a really significant change whereby anything that you're leasing that used to be constituted as an operating lease now has to generate a right of use asset and a liability on the balance sheet. The income statement's not terrifically different, but there are new line items because you have to amortize it. So we're, we're, we're creating new things uh, when we book against these leases. Again, if I mention anything and you, you want me to elaborate, I'm happy to do so. I'll, Stephen and I are keeping an eye on the questions. So when we talk about leasing, right, you could be leasing items um, in, right? You could be a lessee. Uh, so with that one, the accounting is at commencement, you need to recognize a liability and a right of use asset. And that liability and asset are measured at the present value of the stream of payments. So we have to determine a discount rate. And if you're a lessor, uh, the commencement, it, it's similar where I have a, a deferred inflow of resources that's offset by the receivable. And I may or may not use uh, uh, the present value method. That starts to get into the it depends uh, kind of conversation where it might just be a straight receivable. You don't need to discount it because it's just you're just collecting money and so forth. But it applies on both sides. What we find with when we're working with schools is, is there tends to be both. Uh, that you're, you've got some you know, facilities that have restaurants in them or you just have office uh, you know, space that's being uh, sublet to startups or other situations. It, it's quite common or even to other schools. So it's, it's common for both lessee and lessor situations. The lessee changes are more significant, but lessor is still really important and we handle both of those. The challenges with this new standard is that we need to build a new sustainable process to deal with this. This is not a one-time event. It's, it's a new ongoing um, thing we got to deal with. It, it's a new um, <clears throat> process that's going to impact every close, whether you, so some of the schools we work with, you know, they close monthly, others are quarterly and some are semi-annual. So however often it is that you think you're going to be uh, booking, uh, but, you know, at the very least, the, the least I've seen is twice a year. Um, at least uh, like the, the simplest frequency. The thing is, is that this is also a multi-departmental issue. So you're gonna have to get information from multiple sources. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. It makes it a little trickier because you gotta figure out, okay, well, does the maintenance department, are those vehicles leased? What about the athletic department? Do they have, uh, you know, those buses to drive the, the athletes around? Are those leases? Those may all uh, have to get gathered. And that, that's a, that's a, the toughest part of this whole endeavor. So we've got to build this new process. That's the challenge. We have to build a brand new process. And that's what we're here to talk about. That's the easy lease is the new process. You set it up, you put the leases in, and, and then you just use that uh, every, uh, every time you need to. And so it's, it's got this, you know, it, it's, it's different than the other things we've seen in the past. For those of you who dealt with like 606 or whatever, it's, it's, it's not the same. It's not, it's not even apples and oranges. It's 
you know, apples and broccoli or something like that. Like it, it is a very different animal. Um, so foundationally, leasing, just, just very, very basic stuff, right? We, we, you basically have two types of things, is, is real estate and equipment. Like I started giving some examples already. Uh, the other thing is that there could be uh, what are known as embedded leases. And, and those are typically, those could, be, those could also be either real estate or equipment. But that's a service contract that has an underlying asset. Those tend to be the trickiest to find, uh, but, but you know, no worries. There's, there's all kinds of things we could do to spot those and, and efficiently account for them. When it comes to the audit, uh, there's essentially um, some new things we've got to do. And that's what, this, that's what Easy Lease does. It, it, it allows you to create this inventory of all your assets with the critical pieces of information, the start date of the lease, the end date, et cetera. But some of the things aren't on the lease. It's a really important statement. I'm going to repeat it. Some of the things that you need to do the accounting are not on the contract. Like You have to determine what kind of incremental borrowing rate or discount rate, or will you use the risk-free rate to present value those uh, payments, what that's going to be. And there's other decisions that aren't necessarily um, explicit, right? Um, and we have to make some decisions and so forth. So you'll have to gather all the copies of the lease agreements and contracts for attestation, um, support all of those uh, policy elections and so forth, such as the incremental borrowing rate and, um, and other decisions that we make. Well, how are we gonna determine what's a short-term lease or, or not? That's pretty explicit, but capitalization thresholds and uh, a quote unquote low value lease, that's not very explicit in the standard. So we have to make some decisions there. And so the, the system kind of provides you with five, six and seven, the, the, the one through four is, is, is what we need to do. But then you put this stuff in and it'll give you the journal entries and it'll give you the amortization schedules and the roll forward schedule for the lessor stuff, uh, as well as the, the lessee side and anything else you need to substantiate that during audit and, and any other meetings. So it, it really can be this simple. Uh, this, is, this does not have to be a big, big project. But we have to gather all this stuff. We, as, as part of this project, you'll need to go out there and, and figure out, okay, do I have variable payments against my leases? What are my renewal options? Very important if you have reasonably certain renewal options uh, because those uh, impact the asset. We have to include those in the asset and the liability. And again, some things aren't necessarily on the lease, like the fair market value, where I have to say, okay, well, this vehicle that we're leasing, you know, is, is it a hundred thousand dollar vehicle, or do I not know it? Fortunately, there's some great stuff in the standards, and you can just say fair value not determinable, right? So you technically don't have to have this one, uh, which is a very common thing, but it's important because it, it affects the classification, like the effects of is this going to be a finance or an operating lease, and uh, and other uh, the way we account for it. So we'll need to get some of this basic stuff and we'll see this in the system in a moment when I show you the demonstration. That we gotta put in some kind of name for the lease, start an end date. We have to put some kind of a discount rate. Um, what the economic life is, is, is important too, again, for things like classification. Again, not, not normally on the actual contract. So we have to make some decisions and, and so forth. Same thing with fair value that I already addressed. And then what's the rent? Am I collecting money? If so, how much? Is this a payable, and if so, how much is it? So we set up that schedule of payments and renewals and uh, so that it starts to compute everything. And we need to have a completeness here, right? Not only does this need to be right, we need to capture everything. Uh, this is, again, um, kind of the, the tougher part because there's the leases we can see, the assets we can literally see, right? There's, uh, they're, they're tangible and so forth, but then there's those embedded leases I mentioned. So just to define that, an embedded lease is a service contract that has an underlying right of use asset underneath it. So this could be the, uh, a common example that I like to throw out there is uh, in IT. Uh, it's important that you reach out to IT and see what kind of assets they have, because even though let's say we have an agreement with Amazon Web Services where we're hosting something on their servers. Well, if the server, if the underlying server is I'm the only person to use that, um, it could be my asset according to ASC 842. And there's a series of steps you can go through. And again, we have guidance on that, but we're not gonna try to boil the ocean today on spotting an embedded lease. There's just 30 questions you go through and you know, can the asset be swapped out, et cetera. And that means that even though it's just a quote unquote service contract and doesn't say lease or really even rent anywhere on the contract, 
it may still apply. Now, the other places you, we spot um, embedded leases is, is real estate service agreements. Uh, those could trigger that as well. We, we got to capture all this stuff. Um, let's see, one thing I want to mention at this stage is uh, best practice is to review your current payments, um, recurring payments at the earlier part of your project and right at the end, because that's a way we can spot potential leases. So there's six key steps uh, to kind of going through this. Let's imagine that the tablet this gentleman is holding here is our sustainable process for lease accounting, right? I, again, the coalition went with easy lease. And, um, and I've, you know, I've seen and worked with others, but uh, it, it really is, it lives up to its name. It, it, it is simple to, to deploy. And so we've picked out how, what we're gonna do, which is easy lease. But we've gotta go through these steps in order to, to be successful. We have to have a team leading practices to have at least two folks involved in perpetuity with leasing, right? In case somebody's on vacation or something like that. We then need to confirm the required data. And again, we can give you a list of all the minimum things, right? Like those slides I showed earlier, like I gotta have a start date, end date, et cetera. So we gotta know what we're looking for and then actually go out there and find them. It's a good idea to know what we're looking for before we start looking. Not, not, not the end of the world if you don't, but this way you know what to ask. Because again, some things we need to directly ask them because they're not on the contract. And then we'll need to abstract that data. So by abstract, we mean uh, we take the contract and we, we put the information into something that's easier to read, right? Like uh, sometimes it goes straight into spreadsheets. So I have a column for like start date, column for end date, column for you know, my rent, because that can then be automatically loaded into easy lease. Once I start getting to step four, I can, I can start loading. Um, you can do this on your own. We can assist you. We have people that are fantastic. They do nothing but this all day, believe it or not, because this is just such a large endeavor across uh, everybody. And they can abstract for you and they just generate imports into Easy Lease in case you need that. Or, or you know, a lot of folks do it on their own, which is fine too. We have to ensure we have completion in step five and then finally load the data into Easy Lease uh, in step six. So, so if, if this is, if four is done well, six is, snappy. I mean, you're, you'll see it. It takes seconds. We can just load those start and end dates into easy lease and it starts computing stuff for you. Um, we've done hundreds of thousands of uh, leases. Uh, we have, I don't want to name specific universities, but I mean, I, I went, I did my undergrad in Jersey and there's a large university you have all heard of in Jersey that uses this. There's a large uh, California university that uses this on the large scale. And then we have small schools too, community colleges and private colleges and, and other types of schools um, that are, that are use a lot, utilizing this with only a handful of leases, like four leases or three leases, because it's, as, as Lyon said, it, you can try it in spreadsheets, but the, the, all the models I've seen and the models I've built, it, it's, it's too much, it's too complicated, and there are literally things you cannot do with a spreadsheet with certain leases. It's, it's really fascinating. It's, it's a very different kind of uh, um, change to the way we do our accounting. Um, the thing that's different about easy lease is we, implementation with us is optional. Uh, you, you don't have to really do anything with us. You could just get it and do it on your own, and we provide you with uh, materials that guide you through how to do it, and you have unlimited support. Uh, we have a free trial, which I strongly recommend. I mean, we're, we're, we'd love to show you a demo. In fact, that's a great next step. Uh, you can check out the trial right away. Uh, demos are great, but that's like someone showing me how to drive a car. I, I want to drive it myself before I buy it. So the free trial will give you the actual system. It's not watered down or anything, and, and you can try putting in some leases and see how you go. And we can set up a quick call to help you out, right? I mean, sometimes you need like 15 minutes with us just so we can show you around. But again, we have materials that, that guide you through how to do it. We've got good reviews. We've been doing this just about longer than anyone else I have seen out there. Uh, it's not actually, it's about 22 years if you count back from when this whole thing started with us. So way before uh, the ASC 842 was even written, let alone its predecessor, which is FAS 13. So we have the most um, experience. We've got you know, long-term happy customers um, and customers that have lots and lots of leases. So we're gonna switch over to a demonstration here in a second. 
I'm just going to check in on messages here. Stephen, do you have a polling question? Do you want to poll the audience or something like that? How's everybody doing? Any any questions whatsoever? Yeah, we can throw a poll up. Let's throw uh, let's see, does this one pop up on uh, on your screen? It should be. First question should have gone up to just kind of where where you're at in the process. Um, you started to gather your lease data. If this is the first kind of exposure to uh, to where you are, you know, just give us some quick feedback and uh, looks like we got some answers rolling in slowly and surely. So eight, nine, perfect. Awesome. So we got some just started, a couple starting to gather leases. Looks like a good handful are ready for technology. So I think we're at a good spot here with uh, you know the majority of our audience with um, you know showing you exactly what what the technology uh, at hand can help you with. Yeah, and we take we take folks on at all process that we're happy to talk to you no matter where you are. It doesn't really matter to us, um, even if you don't really know how many leases you have. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to kind of begin with the end in mind, and then some folks we meet they've already got like a spreadsheet that's doing a lot of the calculations, and, and they're starting to realize that it's just not gonna. Um, it's not going to be optimal to try to manually um, do it. So what I'll show you is um, I'll kind of simulate very briefly. This is not meant to be a, a comprehensive demo. I want to be very respectful of your time. But I just want to give you a bit of a, 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 an overview of what this would be like and how simple this can really be. Uh, and so I'll, what I'll do is I'll set up the system, show you how you, can, how you spin it up. So if you're doing the trial or if you're um, you know, when, when you get it, um, what it would be like and how quick that is. Then we'll put in a lease. I'll put in a manual lease in front of you. I'll show you how we can bulk load leases in and we'll check out some reports very quickly. Uh, but again, we also have recordings uh, of demonstrations that are, will be longer than what I'm about to do. So you can check those out on our website or just email us uh, at uh, cccs at easylease.com and we can provide you um, any of the content that I'm mentioning it. But the key thing is, is we've got to have a place to keep all of this to make sure that it's being computed accurately. I mean, this is all, it's kind of sad. This is all I do, right? All I do is ASD 42, IFRS 16, and GASB 87. So we kind of take care of all the uh, accuracy part of it for you. And we're going to get completion because it's going to be all in one database that's automatically validating. And it's reviewing some of those policies. You'll notice the system is going to start nudging me in the right direction. And, and then it get, I get all the reports I need. So let's switch over and take a look at the actual solution. It's web-based. So that means that I just go to a website and I'm able to access all of the capabilities. As in, uh, you know, you go to uh, app.easylease.com and you're able to access this right here, which is the system itself, right? There's, there's other screens. Oh, I still see in your PowerPoint right, here, right now. Okay, give me just a second. Is, the, is Easy Lease coming through now? Uh, nope, just still seeing the, uh, the PowerPoint slides. Okay, one second. How about now? There we go. Okay, excellent. So, um, let's set it up first, right? Like, all you got to do, if you, if you get the trial or you're, you're, you're buying it tomorrow or something like that, all you have to do is go in here and Tell the system three basic things because there won't be a lease in when you first go in. Like I've already got some lease examples in here. You just have to tell the system uh, how you operate. And there's just three things you got to do. One, you specify if you're a US GAP, if you have any campuses or other operations uh, uh, per IFRS or for whatever reason you operate per IFRS, uh, you would do that here. And it does do GASB. Uh, we do have universities that have both GASB and US GAP, but I, I, I think the coalition's population doesn't have that many Gatsby schools in it. Then um, we have to specify where my year end is, right? So I've got it set up. So I'm a June 30th year end, but whatever it is, you just plug in the year end. And then you just have to say that you're gonna adopt ASC 842 on 7-1-2022. Um, I'm not even gonna get into some of this stuff to, to explain it, but that's it. Like I just say that, hey, I, I'm a, I'm a private school, I, a year, I end my year on 6.30 or whenever you end your year. And so I, therefore I'm gonna adopt uh, this new standard on this date. And then let's plug in a lease. That, that's all you really have to do to get started. So 
oh, let's do a building, right? Um, and again, we can meet with you and show you more specific examples. But let's say this is you know, a building, it's a dorm or something like that. And I could have a number and I could put the address in here. And then we specify a start date and an end date for this lease. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting in a 10 year lease. I'm saying it's a 120 month lease that starts on the 1st uh, of March, 2022 or, or whenever that uh, this may be. I then need to specify some other basic things like I talked about. So the rent will be on the contract, right? Let's say it's a, we're, we're getting this dorm or leasing it from somebody and it's, it's not a giant building. Well, let's say it's like $200,000 or something like that a month that I'm getting this building for. I'm a lessee in this case. I can easily flip and become a lessor, right? So this is where it has lessor capabilities in case I'm, I have a sublet or something like that. And then I have to put in some things that aren't on the lease. Like I mentioned before, the current economic life is, is required for the standard. Again, a lot of clients, as they're figuring this out and uh, they're not getting direct assistance from us, you can hit F1 on the keyboard and it'll tell you what's going on. So what the heck is a right of use asset? It'll explain it to me. Right? So it's just telling me this is what this is, this is why I'm asking you for it, that kind of stuff. And then we have unlimited US-based support. Um, there's all kinds of other resources. You just go to support.easylease.com and it's got videos that guide you through it. Let's give it an economic life that's nice and long. Um, I'm gonna do like 30 years because a building should hopefully last that long, uh, but that, this is gonna be your policy. And then uh, again, I can hit F1 as I'm trying to figure out like all what all these fields are and there's training videos, but I do need to specify some kind of incremental borrowing rate. Let's say four and a half percent is gonna be the discount rate that I use against this asset. And if I know what the value of this building is, you know, I'm a lessee, I may have no, I may have no clue on what this building's worth. I, per the standard, and I mentioned this before, we can say the fair value is not determinable. Or I could plug in the fact that it's a $7 million building or whatever, but that's it. I've just put in the basics. It's a very simple lease, but other complexities, you can see there's plenty of other fields and there's a way to mass import this as well, which I'll show you in a moment. And it's, it, it's computed it for me. So I've got a right of use asset that I'm gonna be booking of 19,370,000 and some change here. It automatically ran through all the calculations and classified it as an operating lease. And I'm, that's it, I'm done. I can now run an amortization schedule against it or uh, book my journal entry out, or I can add the complexity that I was talking about. If I have renewal options or I don't know, a more complex payment schedule, this is a pretty good deal. I'm paying only $200,000 fixed for the next 10 years. But the pandemic has led to some interesting leasing situations as you can imagine. But yeah, we could also increase these as a schedule or a list of what my payments will be, which is much, much more common. And then what the system will do is it'll give you all the answers that you need. I can now run a report and let me show you, I'm just gonna show you two reports in a moment, but um, I, I'm good to go at this stage. The only other thing I, I wanna mention for the purposes of today is the fact that you can um, import this data on bulk, in bulk, right? So rather than sitting there typing in every lease, you can copy and paste into this Excel template that we provide you. It's also nice and easy and friendly to learn. See, if I click on stuff, it starts explaining to me that, hey, this is what this is and how should I put this in? But I'm doing the same thing that I was doing through the front end. I'm putting in a start date and an end date. So I'm trying to create this office lease, a truck and a warehouse into my system. This is where if you have three leases or 3000 leases, you'd have a list and you just import it in on mass. This is absolutely essential because not only initially do we want to be sure that you have a way to do this, but also um, later on, if you get five new leases or there's a change or you want to terminate a bunch of vehicles, we don't want to sit there clicking through every single one. There's a way to do it on mass. It's going to double check my work, as I mentioned before. Uh, you notice here I have a 43% incremental borrowing rate. I usually like to pick on incremental borrowing rates or, if, or I have a, a current economic life of two months. So I'll fix the economic life for the, uh, for the office space. But if I leave the 43% in for my incremental borrowing rate, it'll tell me uh, that's, it seems a little high, way too high, right? If I'm discounting at that rate. Uh, anyway, 
Um, so we can then take this and import it. And so we call those warnings and errors, whereby if I'm loading things in, I'm not gonna go through this, but I can then grab that file, load it through, and it'll say, hey, I've created these two leases, or I've created these three leases, but it looks like your incremental borrowing rate's really high, or it looks like you're missing a date in this one. So it, it's gonna guide, continue to guide me through. Um, and then I can run a journal entry out of here, I can book a journal entry out of the system by just clicking on journal entries. And so it'll pick out something like this, right? This is, this is my journal entry. Um, so what, what I'm showing here is that before ASC 842, everything was just on the P&L. I have this operating lease. So it's, it's gonna be different for a finance lease, but for, for an operating lease, I, I'm adopting on 1-1-2022, whatever your adoption date is. I just have this on the P&L and then on, the 1st of January, oh, did we lose Andrew? Yeah, so I can I can mute myself, but I can't unmute myself. So sorry, oh, sorry. About that. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so uh, what, what I was saying is that on the 1st of January, it automatically capitalizes this lease. Um, and um, so, sorry, just, just a, a second for me. Okay, good, good go. stuff. It automatically capitalizes the lease um, for me, and it's got my everything I need to go to my general ledger, right? So we, we easy lease will learn what your general ledger needs. You can just put these in so that you can automatically import them or link them to your general ledger um, so that, that, again, that process is as smooth as possible um, moving forward. And then the only other thing I'll show you is this is from the standard um, whereby I'm supposed to summarize my entire lease accounting portfolio um, for, my, uh, for my financials. So from a financial standpoint, I wanted to show you one T accounting example and one kind of financial statement example whereby I've, I've got to summarize what my costs are for my leasing, my cash flow, and there's these new asks. So some of it's similar to 840, but it's, it's, it's definitely a brave new world here um, where I have to do things like variable lease payments. I have to do things like figure out my weighted average discount rates um, against my leases, whether they be operating or finance. I, I've been running all of these examples per ASC 842. If you do have um, IFRS, it'll do IFRS for you as well, like we saw earlier. So certain things would immediately disappear because there's no such thing as an operating lease under IFRS. Uh, just in case you have campuses abroad or GASB 87 for that matter, doesn't matter to us. So I just wanted to spend some time on, um, on this kind of showing you the system very, very briefly. Uh, we'd love to meet with you individually and learn more about what you need and, and, and tailor the presentation to you. So you might be myself or Dan or somebody else. Um, you know, again, I love working with schools because um, I'm a giant nerd and I think it's kind of a little bit more fun than the uh, whatever oil and gas or urinal manufacturers that we work with. So the, the last thing, a uh, couple of last couple of things here I wanted to talk about was um, the, the thing the thing that Lion brought up around trying this in spreadsheets. I, I want to at least leave you with this visual. I won't spend too much time on it, but it, it just doesn't tend to work for 99.5% of the portfolios that we've encountered. And, and again, we've been doing this for a very long time um, because as you can see here, you know, it, it, I don't get support. I don't have somebody who understands 842 thoroughly. It's not centralized and so forth. Whereas we allow you to bulk import. It can be set up very quickly. Once you have the lease information, it, this literally can be, a, you know, you need a day, maybe three, conservatively a week to just uh, power through it, but that's a week when you're doing you know, other things as well. You're doing two hours a day on, on the lease project 
and then everything else that you need to do during the day. Um, so just to start kind of wrapping up here, uh, I want to mention kind of uh, discounting. Then we'll talk about uh, implementation very briefly as well, because that's different with us too. I want to reemphasize that. But um, uh, the coalition's done an amazing job. A 20% discount is uh, really quite uh, excellent. Um, you can reach out, as I mentioned before, to cccs, easylease.com. You can set up a demo. Uh, I would strongly urge you to check out the trial. Uh, because again, you know, you get to actually see if this is right for you, figure out how to start working in it. The great thing is, is you can do this right now for free. Try out some releases. And then if you, by the way, we will convert the trial into your actual environment, which is really commonly done. Right? Client will try, uh, prospect will try it out and then they will, uh, they'll decide to buy. And we just move all the data you put in. We just move it to the instance that you get. Um, there's some T's and C's with that, because if you do the trial and for six months, you don't do anything with it, the, that trial disappears. We have to, we have SOC requirements and all this kind of stuff where we can't keep that data for too long. Uh, the implementation can be different. I don't know, Stephen, you want to do one last poll and then we'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. Yeah, let's do it. Might be helpful to outline how pricing is determined for each school. Absolutely. Do that. Uh, let me put this second question up here, and it should be up there on your screen now. Uh, curious is to if you have insight into how many leases you're currently tracking, and it's totally okay if you don't know at this point. This is what we're here for to help you with understanding the steps aligned and getting started with this project. Yeah, and, and again, we, we have clients that have as, as few as like three or four leases. And we have ones that have tens of thousands, if not, I mean, probably over 100,000 at some of the large, large organizations that we work with. Uh, and it really doesn't matter to us. It's, it's the same kind of deal. But we're, we're, we kind of tried to hazard a guess here on what we thought the range would be. Um, but, but it does make it, you know, if it, it, it's lot, not so much about quantity as it is uh, diversity, because if you have lots of different contracts, that might take some time. So please make your selection now. I'm, um, I'm eager to see what we get here. Um, Stephen, can you see the results? Because I'm, I'm not seeing them. Yep. Yeah, it looks like uh, more so than not, looks like most of the uh, members on the line are looking at portfolios of under 50 leases. It's like we have a couple mm -hmm. that are in the 100 to 250 range, some that are over 250, and a couple that are not sure yet what we're what they're yeah. looking at. No worries. Okay. So um, let's, um, let's just talk about, um, this is going to be the last kind of piece of content we have. And, uh, and then I want to see uh, if there are questions. I can't see them, so Stephen, you'll have to read them out to me. But uh, so the, the way to deploy this is, is up to you. Um, you can just get this thing. Uh, you literally don't even have to talk to us. You can just buy it online, put on your credit card and stuff, and uh, use your own team. Uh, but obviously, it'd be great to meet you first, make sure this is all um, hunky-dory. Uh, and um, you, you know, you can always decide to get assistance later. Uh, most of the folks we work with, they they, they do it on their own. Y'all are smart accountants. This, this is really not uh, that terrifically complicated. And again, we give you a lot of self-service uh, resources. Sometimes we set up quick little five-hour projects to just get you started, uh, point you in the right direction. Or as I mentioned before, you could work with somebody to do abstraction or technical accounting advisory because. There's a bunch of things we, we, that need to be figured out. So uh, these are you know, quite common, but the most common thing that we see, especially with, with the, the way that, uh, you know, with, with the coalition's um, members, it's probably gonna be just a, you know, most of these little projects, but we do offer complete uh, projects where we'll take care of everything for you. We do this sometimes, it's not terrifically common, but sometimes we'll have a customer and that, you know, they, they're short, short-handed, right? This, this labor market today is affecting everybody. It's very hard to find accountants <laughs> these days. And so if, you know, if you lose somebody suddenly or, or you just don't think you have the capacity to do it and you, want, you just want to hand the leases to somebody, it can be taken care of. It's soup to nuts for you, kind of white glove uh, projects are also available. So we're going to be at the Akubo conference in Philly. Uh, at the end of this March, and by we, I mean Stephen and Jenny. Um, so stop by and say hi to them. Uh, there's going to be a... Go ahead, Stephen. 
No, I was gonna I was gonna steal your thunder on the last slide and say, yeah, please uh, stop by and visit us at the College Cost Savings booth, and uh, we'll have some some games and some uh, raffle prizes too. So be sure to uh, stop by, introduce yourself, and drop your info so we can contact you later and give you some prizes. So um, are there questions, Stephen? I, I can't see them. I'm happy to address any you think are appropriate. We're, we're right at 45 minutes, which is what I was targeting. But if anyone wants to hang back and, and ask questions directly, this is, this is the time. Yep, haven't had any come through um, directly that are technical related. There's mm -hmm. um, uh, a question here around you know, how pricing is determined. So I'll go into that um, here in just a minute. Just wanted to, while we, you know, have the time here and wanted to see if there was any more questions on the technical piece of easy lease or anything that Andrew covered here uh, here today, you can feel free to utilize the chat to uh, drop your questions in there. All right, no questions there. Let me uh, pop my video back on here. Perfect. So um, we had one question come in um, on how pricing is determined for schools. So uh, pricing for easy lease is based on a per lease basis. So we'll work with you all um, to understand both uh, your portfolio, uh, what it's you know consumed of and easy lease uh, functions. We have both lessee and lessor functionality as Andrew mentioned, um, and that's uh, one license type. So it's not that you're paying for uh, a lessee and li lessor license, it's all under one license. So um, we'll work with you all to um, you know, understand your portfolio and we can share uh, more information specifically on uh, the costs associated with, uh, you know, per lease based on what it's, um, your the size of your portfolio. However, we are tiered in our pricing. So uh, as you have a higher volume of um, leases within your portfolio, we can bring down the per lease uh, price, um, but all members, uh, regardless of the size of your portfolio, uh, all members of the coalition are uh, have access to that 20% discount off of uh, list price there. I hope that answered it. If there's uh, more kind of content and color needed around that, please uh, please drop me something in, in the chat. Um, but Lion, I, I, I saw you came off video as well. So I just made you, uh, I, I unmuted you in case you wanted to, to say any closing remarks as well, but, um, or if there's any other questions you have. Uh, no questions here. I just wanted to once again thank everyone for attending and encourage everyone to to try the uh, the optional 15 day um, free trial. I think that uh, I think everyone if, if they will try that, then they'll they'll understand how truly easy the software is to use and uh, and it will make their life a, a whole lot easier in the coming year. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Lion. And, and yes, as you uh, as you said, thank you to everybody who joined us live on the line here. As I mentioned at the start, I've gone ahead and recorded today's session. So I'll go ahead and get that uh, finalized and cleaned up. And it'll be sent out to um, the associations and uh, some of the member schools as well that um, you know uh, we can provide uh, this recording to directly. So um, please encourage uh, your members and, and your associations, uh, whoever is on the line with us here today, to reach out to cccs at easylease.com. That has uh, access for all of our team members over here. We're happy to hop on there and answer your questions, get set up with uh, members of our team to dig in and help you guys with uh, getting Easy Lease up and running for your organization. But if, uh, if there's no other questions that are coming in the chat that I, I don't see any coming in, so I'll go ahead and give everybody um, a few more you know, minutes of your day back. Uh, but again, very much appreciate everyone's time and attention here today on the line with us. And uh, if there's any questions at all that come up after the fact, please don't hesitate to reach out to the team over here. Happy to help. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Lion. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.